fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got traction. He can't win the outside. Uh, oh, oh, he's, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up to him. Oh, my God. These guys are going to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. God, what? This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to round number six of the iRacing V8 Supercars official series here on the iRacing Esports Network, proudly presented this evening by SimSpeed TV. Here for round number six, we are at the beautiful Watkins Glen International Circuit where we will be running the cup layout. So we have the chicane at the end of the long straight down the back. We'll provide some great racing. And joining me up in the booth tonight is uh, Jay Kennedy. My name is Zach Hanlon, and uh, Jay will also be bringing us the wonderful pictures that we see around the track this evening. Qualifying is underway at the moment, about halfway through proceedings at the moment. And uh, a man who's not afraid of sitting up on the top step of the podium in a, in a Monday night strength of field race, Madison Down currently on the top of the timesheets. And uh, Jay, we've got a very strong field here this evening and uh, very tight racing here at Watkins Glen. Should be a good night of racing. Yeah, 100%. Should be a really, really fun night of racing. And it's been a little while since we've run this layout, uh, one of the more traditional layouts, because uh, last time I believe we ran the the classic version and we've also run the boot in the previous seasons as well. But a really, really tight field always produces really close racing. And uh, to see Madison down back out on track, Jake Burton second. Those two have a, a bit of a break on the rest of the field, but have a look at the rest of the pack there from Corey Preston down to Marlon McMullen, one and a half tenths of a second separating 10 cars. This is going to be a really, really tight night of racing. Yeah, incredibly tight. And uh, I think the word of this evening is going to be draft. Uh, the draft around here is going to be very effective for a lot of our competitors, especially when it comes to the fuel strategy and uh, saving fuel about a 50% tank capacity this evening and we will, uh, it's actually 70%, but we do expect that drivers will be coming in around the halfway mark. Very cool track temperature uh, server today. Uh, going to be starting off in the evening, about 7.15 local time in the server and uh, starting off at 22 degrees means that we can expect a fairly low tire degradation and especially around here at Watkins Glen with the lap times being so short, uh, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how guys play this pit strategy, strategy pardon me, to their advantage. I've seen a lot of drivers using the undercut throughout this series and uh, with the small amount of tyre drop off this evening, you might find that that's not quite as effective, but we will wait and see. We'll expect that around halfway through the race this evening to see the pit strategies fall out. We're just watching Greg Sharp finish up his lap in the Stealth Simforce car. He's uh, currently in 21st position with a 1109. He comes across the line now. Doesn't look like he's going to improve there with a 1113. So Greg uh, running out near the top, the bottom end of this field uh, and doesn't have any laps left, unfortunately. So he will be starting from the later half of the field. But uh, an incredibly tight field tonight, as we said, some fantastic drivers. And uh, to see a man like Greg Sharp down the bottom of the field there is uh, definitely a testament to the strength of field that we have tonight. Greg being a, a long-time veteran of this series, good to see him still continuing out there at the moment. But um, as you said, these uh, drivers up the front, Madison Down and Jake Byrne, obviously ex-teammates as well, a little bit of fire between those guys and still 
very equal on pace despite uh, going their separate ways there. And they've got about a three-tenth advantage over the rest of the field at the moment. And uh, I think that the, the really interesting battle, is, as we mentioned before, is going to be fourth all the way through to, I mean, really at this point, you could say 17th. You could pretty much, I don't know what order they're going to be finishing in tonight, but it's going to be incredibly tight. And uh, that is going to be a very large train throughout the field. Yeah, it definitely will. And we just saw the championship standings up on screen. Very, very tight at the front of the field between Marlon McMullen and also Jake Burton, Brady Myers in with a shot for this championship as well. So some big contenders out there on track. And the uh, the biggest contender that's probably a little bit further back than he would like would be Brett Loxton. He's got a little bit of work to do starting in 11th position, but starting grid coming up on screen now. Yeah, he's going to have to fight his way up there from 11th. But uh, starting us off from pole position this evening is Medicine Down for Trans Tasman Racing. He'll be joined on the front row by Jake Burton, a no stranger to victory in this series as well, and a very tight gap between those two up front. Corey Preston and Brady Myers will make up the second row of the grid for JMSR Racing and Zero Esports. Michael Taliancic in for Pursuit Sim Racing will start out of fifth, a good qualifying for him, just ahead of Chris Coxhead for V8 Sleuth Esports. Sean Thompson for KRF Motorsports round starts off at row number four alongside Evolution Racing Team's Jordan Ross. In eighth, in ninth position, pardon me, we have Harley Haber. Good to see Harley back out on track with Mac One Esports alongside Jack Boyd for Gone Rogue Motorsports, rounding out the top 10. Yeah, then we've got Brett Loxton and Marlon McMullen on the next row with Kurt Stenberg. Great to see him out on a Monday night as well with Brian Borg alongside him. Andrew Gilliam, a little bit further back than what we've seen throughout this season so far, starting 15th with uh, Thomas McMillan in 16th position. Stevie Anson and Damian Johnson on the next row with the 10th row, rounded out by Christian Smart and Job Stewart. Yeah, then we have Greg Sharp, who we were following before starting out of 21st position. And Cameron Dance for Slick Simpson in 22nd. Zach Baker is going to be starting from 23rd alongside Mitchell McLeod in his talking machine with, I'm sure, a lot of practice for the Sovings running. <laughs> and last of all is Bertrand Fournere, who uh, is a French driver joining us this evening, unable to put in a qualifying time, unfortunately. Um, we'll see if he's able to progress any further out on track. Cars now just awaiting the starter's orders. The red lights are about to come up for us and the revs will arrive here. 25 V8 supercars here at Watkins Glen, 650 horsepower each. The lights are up, the revs are going and we are green here at Watkins Glen. Looks like a decent start for Madison Down. A great start, actually. He's already got a very commanding lead. And Corey Preston's going to dive up the inside of the slow starting Jake Burton to try and take position number two. Jake holding it strong round the outside there. He'll have good momentum coming up the hill. Manages to pull back in ahead of Corey. So uh, not too much damage done there for a poor start from Jake Burton. But the rest of the train now all filing the single file. Very difficult to come up through this S section two by two, especially in the low grip of these V8 supercars, but everyone doing a good job. Bit of jostling back in the pack. Looks like that's Brett Loxton, who we were saying needs to make up some positions for his championship, going for a move around the outside in the chicane. And that's Jack Boyd getting a little bit crossed up there, defending from Brett Loxton. Around the outside, he's trying to go with Brett Loxton. Not quite able to do it though, as they cut back in. So we're not gonna be doing the boot section of the track this evening. After we come round, the long right hand is straight down into the final section of the track. And now Brett Loxton's oh. going to go down the inside. Little bit of a tap, but Jack manages to hold on. Great car control from the Gondberg Motorsports driver. And there's Mullen McMullen, who's going to take full opportunity for that. And it looks like Brett Loxton has actually checked up to let pass Jack Boyd, but that has lost him at least another three positions. Not a good start for the Zuba racing driver. Look at Gilliam up the inside to try and take advantage here too. He's gone through, and that's three positions for him as well. Gilliam will tuck him behind Boyd and Kurt Stenberg in this pack as well. At the front of the field, they've settled in a single file. This is the action pack of the track, and now McMillan through on Loxton. So he's lost four spots out of that failed move, trying to get down the inside of Boyd. But Boyd now is going to have to try and defend from Gilliam, and Kurt Stenberg looks racy here too. Yeah, Kurt Stenberg having a little bit of a look down the inside of Gilliam there. Good to see some sportsmanship from Brett Loxton giving back the position. And that's a big wide move there. And that was actually uh, 
Thomas McMillan just running a little bit deep into the chicane and Brett Loxton trying to recover some of those positions that he's just lost. It's going to be very difficult though. Uh, it's going to, he's going to have to stay behind in the draft until the perfect opportunity. I think a lot of these drivers in the train are going to have to look for small mistakes from their competitors to get past tonight. Already seen a couple of little ones, but as these guys start settling in to the train here, we will see them just start get a little less aggressive and uh, just plot along with proceedings. A little bit of a flare at the back of the field there. A couple of cars going to be coming into turn number one, two by two here. That's the number 15 car of uh, Brian Borg there going down the inside. Able to get that move done. Nice clean move. There's a couple more cars now. Mitchell McLeod made up a few spots already from his starting position of second last. And now coming up on the back of Damien Johnston there. Back up to the front of the field though. And uh, Corey Preston is now in the sights of Brady Myers who is uh, doing his, as far as I've been, uh, I missed last week. I'm not sure Brady Myers was in that Zero Esports car last time I saw him, but uh, First time I've seen him out in that car tonight. Good to see him uh, starting off strongly with a new team. Tucked in behind Corey Preston in fourth position at the moment. Still within a second and a bit of the leaders. And as we can see at the front, Jake Burton is not letting Madison down run away with this at all. Right on the back of the TTR driver, Sean Thompson now having a, a bit of a look on Harley Haber there. We'll get a modem simulation replay here of uh, Sean Thompson coming up through the final part of this track here. And that was a very wide line, a little bit too deep there uh, for the 17 car of Harley Haber and his Mac one eSports machine. So a little bit of uh, momentum loss there, but Harley coming back on the inside there, a little bit of overlap forcing the 20 car to the outside of the track, but not quite able to get the move done on the entry. Got it done on the mid corner though. And uh, nice, return move there for Harley Haber. Good to see him back out on track with some exciting driving. Thanks to modem simulation for that replay there of the pass for seventh or eighth position. We head back to Andrew Gilliam now, who's uh, being chased down by Kurt Semberg and instead in the, uh, well, we'll name in the qualifying grid, not as high as we would expect from Andrew, Andrew Gilliam, Jay, but um, his teammate Michael Taliantic sitting up there in fifth is probably more where we would expect him to be. Yeah, they're almost like they've swapped positions. Taliantic a little bit higher than what we would normally see and Gilliam a little bit further back. It'll be interesting to see how they go. Of course, this is going to be a big fuel race with the amount of draft that these drivers have. So um, the Pursuit Sim Racing guys are definitely in a great spot in that situation. Jake Burton's hassling the rear of Madison Downs car at the front of the field. And of course, we know from the, f the, the previous seven or eight years of racing in these cars at this circuit that Madison Down and that wall at turn four have been very, very familiar over the years. So uh, don't be surprised to see Madison hit what has become known as Madison's wall throughout this race. Uh, as the tyres start to go away, Madison very, very well known at this circuit to uh, run a little bit wide up through the S's. Well, so long as it's only a small shaving of pain, it's not going to worry the multiple time champion here this evening, but uh, it is very easy to just carry a little bit too much momentum up that hill and uh, graze what is essentially the kind of the outside inside wall there. Marlon McMullen though, under immense pressure from Sean Thompson, uh, or the other way around actually, McMullen's coming up on Thompson now, who's dropped a little bit back from Haver after that move previously and McMullen had a good run there, had to give up a little bit of ground, chasing down uh, Sean Thompson there, but we'll have another run, good exit out of turn number one there. That's gonna put him in good steps for a move into the chicane. If he can keep the momentum up the hill here, very tight line from McMullen, keeping that momentum and using lots of curve there, good run. So I'd expect a little bit of a look here it's a very short run up to the chicane. He's going to have a little bit of overlap if he pulls out. Have to be brave on the brakes into the chicane. Not quite able to do it, but Sean's just run a little bit deep there. And now Marlon has been able to go in and under as uh, Sean's had to run wide with that excess speed. He might have even gotten a little bit of a slowdown as well. And this is bringing Jack Boyd into the picture. A little bit of a wag of the rear of that Gone Rogue Motorsports car as he comes out of the loop there. 
And is he going to be able to go for a move around the outside? It's going to have to be Boulder. He'll have the inside oh. line for the next corner. And it's not been easy for Jack Boyd tonight. He's had a few hits throughout this evening. And that is another one. But that hit looks pretty substantial. Big damage to the side of that car. He's gotten going again. But that Golden Rogue Motorsports machine is looking very much worse for where he just tests out the mobility of that car down the straight now. Yeah, that's two hits for Boyd, and he'll, uh, looks like he's probably got a little bit of steering damage from that, because that was wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact, and pretty heavy as well. It was the second hit here from Gilliam, that right there, where he's hit, and there's also been a, a moment for McMillan out of the final corner, as he's tried to go up the inside of Kurt Stenberg, and they've actually made contact as well, so McMillan's lost a spot from all of that fighting in that uh, little battle there, and Loxton now has just gone through on Kurt Stenberg as well, as he's off in the dirt. Oh yeah, that's a big off for Brett Loxton there. Very big. And uh, Kurt Stenberg still battling on with Thomas McMillan there. And uh, those guys are good mates, but they won't be wanting to uh, give each other too much of a hard time out on track. Both want to be progressing up through this field at the moment. And battling like that surely is not going to help. Then Madison down running very wide through the final corner, which uh, of course is the optimum line. You want to get as close to that outside wall as you possibly can to carry as much momentum down the straight as you can into turn one for the heavy braking zone. But Madison down at the moment, not able to shake Jake Burton as we look at Andrew Gilliam now and Sean Thompson. Andrew down the inside into turn number one. Sean not going to make it easy for him. He's going to drag race him up the hill. So we watch them come through the S's and Gilliam stuck on the outside part of the track has to back out of the throttle. And that gives a big advantage there to Sean Thompson who should retain that position up to the chicane. Nice defensive driving there from Sean Thompson. But um, Madison down still being chased by Jake Burton at the front of this field and just behind them as well, Corey Preston and Brady Myers following in fairly closely in tow. They've just dropped off the leading pack there and that is Brett Loxton and Kurt Stenberg. What has happened there? Those guys were not very close to each other after Brett had that off. So has something happened to Kurt? He will get a modem simulation replay out. So they actually were quite a bit closer than I thought. Brett going for the move around the outside into the bus stop and just loses the rear under the brakes, unable to turn the car. And that is unfortunate for both of those drivers. Probably, uh, probably might have wanted to take to the escape road there for Brett Loxton when he lost it in the rear. Don't think he quite caught the grass there. Hard to tell, but Brian Borg taking a, a little bit of evasive action there in his pre Premier Esports racing machine there. But uh, yeah, not oh, and there's more contact. Andrew Gilliam and Sean Thompson up the hill. And now Thomas McMillan surely is going to have a go through on that unless Gilliam can defend the outside line there. But he can't. Oh, there's more contact between Gilliam and McMillan. The chicane here. Watkins Glen is punishing these drivers in the tight quarters racing. And it has not worked out once again for McMillan and Andrew Gilliam's gotten into a couple of cars in a couple of corners there. That is not going to help proceedings. But uh, yeah, some very, very hard driving between all those guys. It's difficult to see what happened between Thompson and Gilliam coming up the hill, but that really kicked things off there. We'll get a modem simulation replay of that moment for you. And this is... Uh, down into the chicane there and this is more of what happened so they came side by side much like last time oh hard to see how much room was given there from sean looks like he could have closed down on andrew a little bit and then andrew definitely had more room going into the corner there oh again difficult angle to judge that one on there but uh these guys are definitely racing hard this evening no lack of effort put in from the drivers for the excitement factor this evening and uh this chicane's proving to be pretty tricky for a couple of these drivers trying to get overtakes done seems a little bit desperate at the moment yeah i'm surprised the intensity of this race at the moment i think drivers are forgetting that it's a fairly long race 43 laps it's around about 50 minutes of racing so there's a lot still left to go and um tires will be starting to, to wear off a little bit of course pit stops still to come in the next 15 laps or so 
So I'm, I'm very, very surprised at how aggressive these drivers are going. I mean, it's great to, for us to watch, but I don't think uh, there'll be too many happy drivers out there at the moment. Gilliam's very, very aggressive tonight. I don't mind seeing how aggressive he is, but uh, maybe just slightly too on the aggressive side. Yeah, for the sake of uh, for his race personally, I'd probably agree, but it's definitely making things exciting up here in the commentary booth. We'll have to see how all these races pan out. As you said, it is a long one, 43 laps this evening, and uh, that pit strategy coming up in about 10 odd laps. It uh, will be very interesting to see how everything plays out. Usually these guys are pretty quiet up until the pit stop phase, and that's when everything starts to kick off. But this evening, uh, no mistake is going to be left unpunished, and uh, everyone's taking as many opportunities as they can. These guys up the front, though, these little two-car breakaways are really working well together as a team to drag themselves away from the rest of the pack. You've got Burton and down up the front, just followed behind. Then you've got Preston and Myers, and then you've got Taliancic, Ross, and uh, even Coxhead's just tucked in with them, as well as McMillan and Sean Thompson. are uh, not able to get away from each other on the track at the moment. McMillan has some pace in that car. Sean Thompson in his KRF machine just looking to struggle a little bit with some of these faster guys coming through and Kurt Stenberg's gonna, pardon me, that's uh, Thomas McMillan, sorry, he's gonna go through down the inside in his mega black racing car. Not quite able to get the move done through turn number one though. Sean Thompson is going to remain in that position and will have the position up the hill Millen, a little bit of a slide on the exit, just really struggling to get that car turned as he's coming up the hill and will not be able to get past the KRF Motorsports machine at this time. But he is looking very strong. Is McMillan nice run through the chicane there and might even have a look down the outside into the outer loop. It's going to be very tight there for Thomas McMillan. They're going to get it done. A little bit of a trade of paint halfway through the corner there, but it looks like Oh, McMillan's on the outside now into the second last corner and he's not going to be able to do it but Sean's just pushed a little bit too deep into the second last corner there and that is going to be job done for Thomas McMillan and it, even Brian Borg now is having a little bit of a look in his Premier Esports racing team machine Sean might have to go a bit defensive here Brian goes to the inside desperate on the brakes nice and late pulls it up just clips the curb nicely and runs him out to the curb very gently. They're giving him enough room to come back onto the track, which you need to do at Watkins Glen if you're going to go for the pass oh. there. But once again, two by two, up through the S. There's a little bit of a bump and a massive hit into the outside wall for Brian Borg. And that is huge damage to his car. Big suspension damage. And he has pulled over immediately and will presumably be taking no further part in this race. It was a bold move. It always is coming up the hill here at Watkins Glen. He tried to hold it tough down out, around the outside coming up the hill. And uh, yeah, I mean, Sean probably needed to bleed off a little bit of speed, but uh, the corner was technically his at that point. It does look like, and Brian Borg, unfortunately. Yeah, Brian, no, they probably both could have gotten out of the throttle. You could argue it either way, but unfortunately Brian Borg is the man this evening who comes off second best and he will be watching the rest of this race or the most part of this race from the pits with big damage to that car. Having a look now to the battle for fifth and sixth, which has remained pretty stagnant. These guys just having a bit of a, uh, a coast and trying to keep up with the group up ahead are Michael Taliancic and uh, Carl Stokes there. This is the battle pack, which has been throwing up lots of excitement and uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's uh, Mitchell McLeod, who's already up 10 positions. Fantastic drive up into 14th already and looking like he's got good pace here to have a little bit of a look on Sean Thompson as well. And he's only got Job Stewart just up ahead of him as well. A little bit of a look there from Mitchell McLeod in his talking machine. And uh, I'm sure that Mitchell's probably going to be getting progressively faster as this race goes on. Up here in the booth, we know that Mitchell does put a lot of time and effort into uh, these... Uh, Every, everything Monday. else. Everything else but Monday Night V8. So I actually know what Mitch was doing before this race for warm-up. actually was having a skippy race with Max Verstappen. They were battling for the last three laps, nose to tail, very, very tight. So uh, Mitch is in fine form tonight. But Jack Boyd's got a good run out of the last corner here. 
Yeah, he does, and uh, he might have to have a little bit of a think about defending there, not this time by, but uh, just shows how adaptable oh, no. Mitchell McLeod can be, and Sean Thompson has run a little bit deep into turn number one, and he's going to have to deal with side-by-side -side up through the S's again. Jack Boyd just dabbing on the brakes there. He doesn't want to go too risky on that move. He's seen a couple of drivers already come unstuck ahead of him this evening in that similar fashion, and... Uh, He's already copped a couple of hits tonight. He does not want to be another victim of the wall up at turn four. And big oversteer moment through the S's there, caught nicely and managed to even still make the second apex there. But a lot of the drivers from the back of the field have uh, managed to get themselves quite high up this evening thanks to a fair amount of uh, bumping and battling between quite a lot of these cars. Quite a few of the cars inside the top 10 started quite a ways out of the top 10 and uh, this battle for 12th through to 18th which is very tight at the moment Sean Thompson and Jack Boyd have lost a considerable amount of positions uh, compared to those around them it'll be interesting to see if that mindset affects them throughout the rest of this race and uh, it's going to be another position lost for Sean Thompson unfortunately another car goes through at turn number one and he will be looking at the back of another car up through the S's this time as Jack Boyd tries to recover as much of this race as he possibly can after a couple of unfortunate endings for him with some moves earlier on in the race. He might have to defend here from Sean. Oh, a little bit of a jab to the inside there and uh, that just puts Sean off enough to uh, tuck back in. He's not going to have to risk the position there. Zach Baker though behind them with Cameron Dance looking for a move around the outside. Cameron also started very lowly in this field from 22nd up in 18th at the moment, so it has been progressing. But um, I had quite a few drivers, Kurt Stenberg, Brent Loxton behind him, two notable drivers who were up inside the top 10 who are no longer up there. Back to the front though. The battle rages on between Jake Burton and Madison down. Three tenths of a second is the gap, and uh, I dare say it hasn't exceeded that more than uh, more than a tenth or so throughout this entire race. These guys have been stuck to each other very intently, and I presume that Jake Burton's just sitting in the draft here, keeping it cool, and is going to be waiting for the pit strategy to plan out here before he really has a bit of a go. Had a uh, had an unfortunate incident in a race earlier this evening to Jake, so a little bit of personal redemption here at Watkins Glen for him this evening. And uh, I'm sure he'd love nothing more than to get one up on his former teammate and team boss, Madison Down, and multiple V8 supercar iRacing champion also. Brady Myers is looking to just apply a little bit more pressure here to Corey Preston, who's been doing a phenomenal job, actually. We usually see Corey fade off a little bit in the second half for some of these stints, but he's doing a good job at the moment managing those tyres, but here's the move from Brady Myers tuned in at just the right time these guys are going to go side by side up to the S's, Brady leaving plenty of room on the outside for Corey to blend back in but Corey's not giving it up, they're going to go two by two up through the S's here, Brady dabs on the brakes, going to have to tuck in and that's going to lose them time to the guys behind and Corey Preston barely getting up the hill, almost making contact with the outside wall up at four there through the S's. And uh, looks like Brett Loxton is going to be the first of our competitors this evening to pit. Now, he's got good reason to do so. He's out of position and will have quite a bit of clean air to try and uh, recuperate a little bit of the momentum that he's lost throughout this race. And hopefully might be able to gain a couple of positions. But you can just see that how much that little battle there between Preston and Myers has closed back Jordan Ross and Michael Taliancic. They're right up on these guys now, pretty much within draft range. And uh, Corey and Brady now sitting about four and a half seconds off the leaders, part of them battling. They were only about two and a half, three seconds off. So they've lost quite a bit of time out of that. In fact, last time by about a second and a tenth slower than our leaders. So very, very... Uh, Interesting that these guys will decide to battle now. And oh, Sean Thompson, close. he decides to dive into the pits very late. And uh, that will check up Damian Johnston, who's now going to be passed by Cameron Dance as a thank you to that. And Cameron Dance for Slick Swim Sports will fire his way down the inside of turn number one. Another position there for Cam Dance. 
up into 15. Good move there from Cam just to take advantage of that too and good uh, avoidance there from Damian Johnson as well. Interesting to see which drivers have come into the pits. Down and Burton continuing on for a little bit longer. But Loxton in, Stenberg in. Of course, Loxton and Stenberg in that incident together earlier through the uh, chicane, through the bus stop. And also Sean Thompson, as we just saw, coming in. It'll be interesting to see if one of these two, Down and Burton, come in at different times or whether they come in together. I think they'll come in together and try and draft each other. Don't be surprised to see Burton short fill a tiny little bit to jump down at the stop. Yeah, definitely wouldn't be surprised to see some of that, but it will still be interesting to see out who comes out first. Of course, uh, Jake Burton is very fast in these cars and he could have been saving a little bit of pace sitting behind Madison for these few laps. Harley Haber, first man inside the top 10 to come into the pits. Andrew Gilliam has also decided to come in as well as Damien Johnston and uh, can't see who that is behind him as well. Christian Smart in his Gone Rogue Motorsports machine also deciding to travel down pit lane to take some fresh Dunlops and a good splashing of E85 to propel themselves around here for another 23 laps. So we're getting into the zone now for the pit stop strategies and Mitchell McLeod is looking to move himself in the top 10 for the time being. Pit strategies obviously still needing to work out there, but Mitch, looking to make up as many positions as he can before these pit stop cycles begin for him. And uh, a very good drive from the talking drivers so far. See if they decide to come in in the next lap or two. Uh, Jordan Rost has pitted as well as Chris Coxhead and Marlon McMullen now firing his way down into lane as well. Very late. That was committed. Onto the lane. That was very committed indeed from the several time bed supercar iRacing official series champion Mitchell McLeod and Job Stewart still continuing around Jack Boyd another man very committed to getting into the uh, pits as late as possible now interestingly here a little bit of traffic possibly for our leaders Sean Thompson and Damien Johnston have pitted but now they have the leaders coming up just behind them so this could really play into whether or not our leaders decide to pit now because these guys are not going to go anywhere. They've made their pit stop and they're just going to be a moving chicane. So with the pace that those guys have, they're going to be on these guys within a lap or two. And if you don't pit now, you could potentially get stuck in that traffic. I think for that reason alone, both of these guys are going to have to come down onto pit road now. Oh, come on. Interesting. Very surprising to see that. So this is <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Uh, we've got another car. Is that uh, Jack Boyd just coming out of the pits as well? Surely yep. that's going to play into this battle as he gets up to speed. Oh, he's come out a significant. Oh, he's coming a bit ahead of where I thought he was going to. So he's actually not going to play into this battle as much as I thought. Corey Preston, Brady Myers, Michael Taliansic, three guys from the top five now in the pits. And uh, Madison down encroaching upon this traffic now. Will he get to it by the end of the lap? He might just get away with it here. Those guys up ahead are on fresher tires, but that being said, the pace has not dropped off significantly. Oh no, it was all going so well for Mitchell McLeod. And well, maybe he should have at least practiced one pit entry uh, before the race this evening. Bit late on the brakes there, locking it up, trying to not crash into Job Stewart on the pit entry there and uh, that is unfortunate for Mitchell McLeod who was up 13 positions at the time of coming into the pits now surely guys we're going to come into the pits this time by Madison is not but Jake is so here we go this is the battle for the lead Jake Burton he's going to have to come out into clean air if he doesn't come out into clean air this is going to kill his race subsequently if Madison catches these guys that could kill his race as well he's got a little bit of a margin it's enough to have a draft which is actually advantageous but if he gets too close that's when it starts becoming a problem for the v8 supercar champion several times and he's coming up the straight now still a good gap to the cars ahead that draft is going to be playing into his hands he's also got his teammate behind him kurt stenberg so be interesting to see if uh, Kurt might be able to possibly hold up Jake if uh, he does come out just around that time. Although it's actually probably not going to work out that way just now that I'm thinking about it. But Jake is out of the jacks and out of the pits now. 44 and a half seconds on the lane time. That's comparable to a number of other drivers who have already been into the pits 
a little bit faster than a couple as well though in fact it is one of the fastest stops but only marginally only by about half a second or so and now madison down will come down onto pit lane so we'll cut back to that as he's ready to come out of the pits but jack boyd is ready to go for an overtake right now he doesn't want the cameras going anywhere and he is going to go down the inside of the pursuit sim racing car of job stewart there and a good move for jack who's in a bit of a recovery mode after a couple of clashes earlier this evening. We're now looking at Jake Burton coming through the final section of the track now. We'll have to see where he comes out in relation to Madison down. So Madison is about to come off the jacks now. He's 16, 17 seconds in the pits. How long is it going to be? Jake has got good momentum here. Surely he's going to have the position done. 23 and a half seconds is the stop for Madison down. That's pretty fast. But Jake Burton, two seconds faster on the lane. You can't beat that. And it is position done to Jake Burton by a considerable margin. And uh, that stop for Jake Burton was actually, yeah, actually two seconds faster for Jake Burton. So Madison down losing out big time in the pits. He's going to have to use a lot of speed now to catch up to Jake Burton. He almost needs a little bit of help from someone coming out of the pits in between to get a bit of draft to close it up because two and a half seconds back, he will not have draft. Of course, there's a big difference in fuel numbers purely based on the fact Burton was tucked under that rear wing of down for the first 23 laps or 22 laps. So that would have saved him a big chunk of fuel, pretty much two seconds, six litres of fuel. And uh, that, sh that is the gap that you see purely just based on sitting under that rear wing. Good job from Burton to, to be very, very smart and sensible just uh stay consistent for that first stint saved as much fuel as he could now down's got to drive like the champion that he once was he hasn't lost it but uh the guys around him have just got so much better so this would be great to see whether madison down can still close that gap back down and uh see what it is at the end of next lap good first lap for jake burton it's a 110 for his first flying lap out of the pits Madison Dowd needs to really do a 109 something here to try and close that gap back down. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He really does need to pick up the pace and he's uh, getting closer and closer to his wall as he starts to pick up the speed now. Corey Preston suffered a little bit in that uh, in the pits as well. He's only six tenths of a second slower than Brady Myers in the lane, but uh, he's dropped off considerably from him in the last lap or two. Last lap, actually, he was about a second and a half off the pace, so maybe a mistake from Corey Preston that we weren't able to grab uh, on the last rotation around this circuit. Now he's under a little bit of pressure from Michael Taliancic. Now, interestingly, I'm just trying to figure out what happened to... Uh, it's the ERT driver of... Um, Jordan the, Ross. Uh, yes, Jordan Ross. That's the name I'm looking for. And I'm only struggling to, to think of his name because it's very difficult for me to see where he is on our timing screens. He's just behind Chris Coxhead, so he's lost that spot to Coxhead in the stop. It was a four-second longer stop for Jordan Ross from Chris Coxhead. So that's the difference there. First flying yeah. lap for Jake Burton, same time as what... Uh, sorry, for Madison Down, same time as what Jake Burton did on his first flying lap. So no difference in time, still 2.4 seconds separating first and second. Brady Myers is actually one of the quickest cars out on track at the moment. He's starting to close that gap at the front. But uh, Taliancic looks very, very strong here on Corey Preston. Yeah, he is looking good. Um, and yeah, unfortunate to see Jordan Ross lost out in the pits there. He was having a close battle with Brady previously. And I'm sure as to why his pit stop was so much longer. But Michael Taliancic, who's uh, usually a man we uh, talk about more for his pit strategies, more so than his speed, is... Uh, giving us a little bit of a surprise tonight. He's encroaching on Corey Preston for fourth position, just three tenths of a second separating these guys. And Corey Preston, we were saying earlier, he's he's had trouble in the second half of these stints in these fair supercar official series races. Does struggle to hold onto the tires, but in that first stint here, he actually was looking rather strong in the second half of that stint, even though Brady was able to come up on him. But just wonder if he's able to keep that momentum for the last 16 laps of this race and uh, bring himself home a good result. Been a while since Corey Preston's had a good finish in one of these official series races, so it would be good to see him uh, even not on the podium, but in a good top five position 
Just having a look now back towards Sean Thompson and Job Stewart's been an action packed night for Sean. He's uh, been trading paint with a couple of drivers tonight, but has stayed more or less in the fight for uh, the midfield and currently looking to move himself to the front of the pack that we're in at the moment which was uh, is headed by Jack Boyd for 12th position there. Job Stewart, good speed from that car coming down the straight. I think Jack's probably got more pace in that car than is suggested due to the uh, damage that he suffered. Took a big hit to the right-hand side of that car after a uh, after Thomas McMillan, I think it was, went for a move down, or he went for a move around the outside. Or actually, maybe it was Sean Thompson. Hard to remember with all the it's action. There's been so much going on. on. I know. It was Gilliam that made contact in, into the wheel. I know that it was Gilliam that made that contact, but the rest of it. Just noticing, have a look at something at the front of the field. Madison Down has just set the fastest lap of the race, a 110.04, and Jake Burton a 110.3. So it is now down to 2.06 seconds and closing even further. Now down to two seconds. So here we go. Madison Down and starting to close in. I was wondering if Jake Burton, I mean, we know he had all that time saving fuel, saving six litres around this short track in such a few amount of laps, it, uh, it does seem very difficult to be able to do. And I wonder if Jake Burton has also, in conjunction with doing a bit of fuel saving, also possibly just underfueled the car slightly, try and coast at home. Sean Thompson, a little bit of a look down the inside into the in a loop chicane they're not quite able to do it trying to push jack boyd through the chicane and this is giving the guys behind a little bit of a peek into uh ways they might be able to get around saw both guys behind just going for that wider line trying to really suck onto the inside of the apex and carry some good corner speed through there not able to get it done though been some risky moves throughout this evening and these guys don't want to come unstuck with just 14 laps to go. So about 15 minutes worth of racing remains for these guys. And Job Stewart is definitely applying pressure to the Gone Rogue Motorsports machine at the moment. And this is a good little four car battle here for 12th position. It just goes to show that uh, you know, no matter your skill level, no matter the amount of talent that you have or how much time you spend in these cars, you can always find yourself in a battle around the track here on the Monday night series broadcast so uh if you've been watching these races and you think you have a little bit of speed and, and enough i rating to come join us here in the top split don't be afraid to do so as you can see the racing is good fun and you can also oh! get your uh, sponsors out there as well and jack boyd was thinking about going to defend that position but unfortunately he just was not able to pull the car up and uh mainly probably made the wiser of two decisions there unlike we saw from brett loxton earlier in the race to just dive down the escape road there and we can see just don't know if he decided that he turned in too early or that he'd uh, lost a little bit of braking or he'd just gone in a bit too deep there but I think the right decision there made by Jack Boyd even though it cost him a couple of positions he'll be able to come back and now Job Stewart defending or it's defending up uh, from Sean Thompson another car who's been in the wars a little bit throughout this race but looking to uh, move himself back up through the field. He's unfortunately lost six positions tonight. Has Sean had a great qualifying performance? And look at the different lines these guys are taking through turn number one. There's uh, lots of different lines being taken there. And now Sean oh, he had such a good run coming up the hill that Job was just waiting to get the power down as he came through the second part of the hill. And it killed the run for Sean. And now Damien Johnston's going to go for a run down the inside into the chicane sean looking to defend round the outside runs it deep and jack boyd is going to go round the outside great driving there from jack boyd and sean's going to have, have to care be careful to get back down on the apex here because sean Tom, um kurt stenberg is tucked in right behind him and almost tried to go through as well but not quite enough room for the trans tasman racing drivers cameron dance is also looking to go through a few racy drivers here looking to uh get through to the front of this pack and at the moment job stewart has a little bit of breathing room now he's just managed to pull himself out but have a look up at the front of the pack here the gap was two and a half seconds just a few laps ago it's down to 1.1 and madison down has just been absolutely smashing the laps at the moment fastest lap of the race was set two laps ago on a 110.04 last lap a 110.06 the 
consistency shown by Madison at the moment is absolutely incredible. And at that rate, he is going to be right on the hind heels of Jake Burton within a handful of laps. With uh, 12 laps remaining here at Watkins Glen, that bodes well for us up here in the commentary booth and you at home. And uh, if you've been enjoying tonight's racing as well, please don't forget to subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network and also give us a big thumbs up on the video as well. Every little bit helps. And uh, also, if you have mates who enjoy racing, can't get enough of it and want to see good hard racing, don't be afraid to refer them over to us. And on a Monday night, what could you be rather doing than watching these 650 horsepower machines travel around tracks we wouldn't otherwise see them at and especially when the racing is as tight as this, it is always fantastic to watch. And looking now to Michael Taliancic, who's been chasing down Corey Preston for the last couple of laps. He's given up a little bit of that, uh, that pressure room there that he had built up. He was up at about three tenths of a second just a few laps ago. Gap now out to six tenths. But Chris Coxhead and Jordan Ross behind them have been able to close up and will be joining that battle very shortly. And now a little bit of traffic here for our leaders. Jake Burton getting past, uh, I think that's Bertrand Fornare there, who's uh, still getting accustomed to a V8 supercar a little bit and may just hold up Madison down ever so slightly through that final corner there. Probably lost about a tenth of a second out of that, but importantly, he is still catching our leader, Jake Burton. Not so great of an advantage that time round, just a tenth and a half, but every little bit will count before the chequered flag flies this evening. McMullen in a bit of a nowhere, no man's land at the moment. He's stuck in eighth position, looking to catch the train up ahead of him. And if he can do that, he uh, might be able to make a couple of positions, a little bit of a gap up to that train though. Looking further back through the pack though, with these four and five car trains, Cameron Dance fans out on Kurt Stenberg. Good speed from the Slick Sim Sports car down the inside, just manages to pull it up. Used a little bit of too much break there. Locked the rears and they're going to run side by side up through the S's here. Ah, Dance and Stenberg. Dance going to have to be careful round the outside here. Stenberg equally. Oh, and Dance has gone into the wall. That is a very big hit. And that's going to... Oh, it looks like the car's still going to travel along. But that really killed the momentum up the hill and uh, not going to be able to get the move done on Stenberg. And that's lost them ground to the pack up ahead. We've seen this a couple of times tonight. It's so easy in these V8 supercars just to forget how much they can plow at high speed, especially when you get into the off-camber part of the S's here. So Dance even off the throttle a little bit here, but it's so off-camber. You can see that concrete strip in the middle. That's where all the grip is. That's where Kurt Stenberg was. And unfortunately for Cameron Dance, he just washed out up into the wall at the top of the hill there. And uh, we'll have to give up that position and also time to the group ahead. Have a look how close now Madison Down is. He's now down to seven tenths of a second. Despite that traffic, he still was faster. And then last lap by 2.10.1, 2.10.4 for Burton. So the gap closing, only nine laps to go. The current rate, Madison Down will be right on the rear of Jake Burton's bumper within the next three or four laps. It means we're going to have five laps of defending. Remember the last time we saw Jake Burton defending a position for a few laps here? We had Scops last year. It was an incredible battle. Burton knows how to defend here, but it could get very, very spicy between these two very, very competitive drivers. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jay. And uh, I mean, Jake Burton's had some fantastic defensive drives in his past. And uh, Madison Down is a man who knows how to get around in one of these V8 supercars, but will he be able to outmaneuver the willpower of Jake Burton to take victory this evening? We will know in around seven or so laps of racing. We're having a look just a little bit further back from our lead pack because this is the battle for fourth all the way through to seventh. Preston, Taliantic, Coxhead, and just tucked in behind them and just barely managing to hold on to this pack after a little bit of trouble in the pits as Jordan Rossby's done a good job actually to get up to these guys. He was traveling a little bit further behind, but he's been putting in good laps. And, I mean, just all, all three of the cars at the back of this pack are lapping within three hundredths of a second of each other. So incredibly tight at the moment. In fact, Corey Preston is the slowest of these cars. 
Sorry, is Sally uh, Hamji still saving? I mean, he probably is just making sure that he's not getting too close to Corey so he doesn't check up here because if he does have to check up and he doesn't keep a consistent pace, it could bring him into the clutches of Chris Coxhead very easily. And we know Chris Coxhead doesn't mind uh, having a go at any opportunity that's presented to him. I'm sure Michael will be pretty happy with the top five. And if he can get past Corey, I think he'll be pretty happy. But if he can just stay where he is, it'll be a good points haul for the Pursuit Sim racing driver. And Corey's been doing a good enough job here where he probably only needs to worry about making a mistake to allow Taliansic through if he can keep up the relative pace that he's had throughout this race. But up at the front of the field, half a second, there it is, minus 0 0.500 between our two leaders. And uh, it is going to be a very testing final stint of this race for Jake Burton with the incredibly experienced Madison down following very intently. He's been closing down lap after lap and we'll see just how good the consistency's been. They come over the line for Burton. It's a 110.414. For Madison down, it's a 110.363. So there's only a tenth in it, but once you get this close to the car ahead, the gains become significantly more marginal as we're going almost three wide through the outer loop. Down the back there, Joe Stewart cutting back in, hugging the apex, little bit of a rub, trying to keep his opponent to the inside of the track there, but Sean Thompson's having none of it. He's going to go through into 13th position there. A great move from the KRF Motorsports driver after testing times earlier in the race. And Damian Johnson's going to get it done down the inside through the final corner as well. Manages to pick up the grip on the concrete strip in the middle of the track. Not quite having the overlap. Going to duck in for a last little bit of draft before he goes for the brakes. He's late on the brakes. Is it going to be enough, though? It's going to be enough to get him there at the apex, but it's going to kill the mid-corner speed. Unfortunately, Kurt Stenberg just was ever so slightly out of position there and was not able to continue putting down the power there. Had to check up. If we just get a replay here of what happened as they were coming up into... Uh, Preston's actually the lost all these spots here. here. Has he? So, Tally Ansic, woo, big move down the inside. And Corey Preston caught out big time on that shallow line, took it way too deep. And that is unfortunate for the JMSR racing driver who was doing so well to uh, keep himself into fourth position. Now finds himself actually off the back of that train by a second and a half now. So that might be unrecoverable for Corey Preston with just five laps of this race remaining. Yeah, it's going to be tough for him to get back. If he can get in the draft, he'll uh, be able to close that gap back down. So Taliansic now in fourth. But have a look how close Madison down is now. Last lap by a 10-3 and a 10-2 for Burton and down respectively. Down looks very, very quick. But is there enough time for him to actually get a move done? Will he be able to force a mistake from Burton? We know how good he is at defending. Has Burton saved enough fuel in the last few laps to make sure he's right? This is going to be a really, really interesting finish. Five laps to go, about six minutes of racing. Five very quick laps, about a minute and ten for these guys up at the front. And uh, Madison's been making sure that he's been putting in consistent times. The gap comes down again, but Jake Burton's just picked up the pace ever so slightly once again. These guys are putting everything down on the track they possibly can and using every millimeter of this circuit. A little bit of inside curb as they come up the hill on both occasions for Madison down. That's definitely the uh, the line I'd be using. And good speed up through the S's there. And you can just see how much speed he has coming up the back straight here and into the inner loop chicane, just closing and closing and closing. But once you get into this about two tenths, three tenths of a second zone here, there's not a lot of aero on these V8 supercars, but the aero that they do have, it just opens up enough of a gap where the car just starts to push ever so gently and it can just kill your lap time by one or two tenths but around here with such short lap times it is enough to maybe just hold off your opponent just up ahead of these guys someone's had a little bit of a spin was that Cameron Dance in the slick sim sports car it was and he's decided to pull off he doesn't want to get involved in this lead battle pack whatsoever and we'll just continue to see how that battle up at the front, continues to go. Madison down, very close now, closer than he's ever been. 
Is he going to be able to get the run up through this? As if he has a run here, he may well be able to do something a little bit wide through the first part. And you can just see how much the car's pushing as he comes up the hill. And you can just see in the corner of your right-hand side of your screen there just how much he has to jiggle the wheel to find every little bit of grip. Having a little bit of a look there and just starting to pile up the pressure on Burton now. Barely half a car to a car separates these guys at the moment, but... Jake Burton's just got to keep his head cool here. If he keeps it cool, Madison may not be able to find a way past unless he takes... He's probably going to have to just approach turn the S section a little bit differently, a little bit slower in and faster out because uh, Jake's going to have to slow up on the mid corner there if uh, this pace continues. And you can just see how much Jake's trying to push there. Big wiggle from his car as he was coming into the entry of the penultimate corner there. And Jake Burton will have to defend big time this time round. Madison down right on the bumper. Closer once again. Nice and smooth out of turn number one now. So we'll see here. Pretty early entry for Madison. He's off the throttle early. He's going to try and carry that speed up the hill. It's good. Little bit oh. of a wiggle as they come up the hill. Barely holding on and barely missing the wall up at the top of the hill, which he has so famously made friends with on a handful of occasions. Oh, and he's giving it everything. He's trying to use every bit of the track and some as he just gets out onto the grass on the entry into the chicane there. This is an incredible fight. The uh, rest of the field has settled down a little bit. Coxhead and Taliantic, the only battle, but they are about the same gap as our leaders. We'll stay with the leaders until the end or until there's a gap formed between them because this is incredibly tight. Burton is wanting to try and take back the lead in the championship from Marlon McMullen and Madison Down could change that with a good result here. Oh, both sideways coming out of the final corner. Two laps to go. And Madison using all of the grass there on the exit. He did not want to put any more turn in that car. So committed on the brakes is Madison Down. Killed a little bit of his mid corner and exit speed there, but this is where it's so crucial for him. He's got to get this right up the hill. It's a bit straighter this time. That's going to give him a better run and a straighter run. A little bit of oversteer still, but so for Jake Burton also. Not quite as bad for Burton. So the gaps just opened up ever so slightly, but Madison's charging back and it's on the brakes where Madison really seems to be getting the job done. I wouldn't be surprised to see a late ditch move into turn one from Madison down if you can get the run out of the final corner. But Jake Burton, very strong in this middle section of the track and Madison down, Whoa. he's in the car all the way to the exit of the corner and he just runs it a little bit too wide now. And is that enough of breathing room for Jake Burton to run away with two or now one lap to go? Whoa! Ease down, Madison. There's still a little bit to go. We've got to get to the finish before you can stand on top of the podium. And that was a massive moment. And that just goes to show, after so many years, how you can control these cars. Big, big... <laughs> how close was he to that tyre barrier? Oh, I can't believe he didn't hit that tyre bundle there. That was incredible. I think Burton now might have the advantage. It depends on Zach Baker here. Zach Baker could play a big part in this as he has a massive oh. moment. And he's still sideways. Burton's compromised his run a little bit here. I don't think Down's going to be close enough. But that could have been a huge moment there with Zach Baker having a huge slide. And Burton looks like he might be able to hold on. Down's giving it absolutely everything, though. Unfortunately, it looks like he's given it absolutely everything and a little bit more. And the little bit more for Madison Down is going to be what cost him today as well as a slow pit stop. Jake Burton's played it cool since the beginning of this race. He spent the first stint tucked in behind the multiple time V8 supercar champion and patiently waited for his attack, which he made in the pit stops and has continued to charge home ever since. A great defensive drive, putting up with immense pressure. Jake Burton is the winner of round number six here at Watkins Glen in the iRacing V8 supercars official series. A fantastic drive from both of those guys. A quiet second half of the race for Brady Myers, but a good out showing in new colours for him. And uh, yeah, out of fuel. Not surprised if a couple of these guys come over the line just barely. Great drive for Michael Taliantic and Chris Coxhead. 
two guys picking up top fives, uh, which is uh, not so much, well, I wouldn't call it a rarity, but uh, it doesn't happen every day for those guys. So excellent to see from them. And uh, more drivers continuing to battle just in these last couple of corners here. Greg Sharp's had a pretty quiet race, gone up two positions from his starting position of 21, and he's going to come home just ahead of Steve Janssen in his 22 machine, unless Greg runs out of fuel across the line here, which he does not. So good drive from both of those guys. But wow, what a race from this man on screen, Jake Burton. Kept it so cool for the first half of the race, stayed tucked in, saved the fuel. And when it really came down to it in the pits, he used it all to his advantage to take home the race. And Madison Down did not make it easy for him pushing all the way to the very end and having the gap from two and a half seconds after the pits down to as close as about 2.23 of a second in those dying laps, but a little bit too much enthusiasm from the TTR driver spoils his chances at victory. A quiet, but I'm sure very valued podium there for Brady Myers, who will continue his hopes at a championship victory, rounds out the podium. A great drive from Michael Taliantic in the Pursuit Sim Racing car for fourth position. Chris Coxhead, another driver with an excellent performance by uh, general standards, up into fifth in his V8 Sleuth Esports car. Corey Preston, unfortunately, dumped towards the end of the race there. It's going a little bit too shallow, or trying to defend uh, from Michael in the dying laps there and came home in sixth position. Quiet race for Jordan Ross, who lost out in the pits, who was up as high as fourth Unfortunately, comes home for seventh. And Marlon McMullen just did not have the pace tonight and uh, is going to need to find something special the next round if he wants to continue his hopes at championship victory. Harley Haber didn't get to see much of him on screen tonight, but good to see him back out on track in his new Mac one eSports machine. And Andrew Gilliam rounds out the top 10 in his Pursuit Sim Racing car. Here we got Thomas McMillan finishing in 11th in the end. Up five spots from where he started. Jack Boyd was in the action in the first half. Drops a couple of spots to finish in 12th. Job Stewart up seven to finish in 13th with Sean Thompson down seven in 14th position. Kurt Stenberg, good recovery after that incident early on with Brett Loxton to finish in 15th position. Damian Johnson in 16th position with Christian Smart in 17th. Brett Loxton, fair way back from where he started in 18th position. Greg, Star, Greg Sharp and Steve Janssen. The last drivers on the lead lap with Zach Baker, uh, Furanay, Dance McLeod, and Borg, the rest of the field. And what a fantastic race night of racing it has been here on the iRacing Esports Network, proudly presented this evening by SimSpeed TV. But uh, there's plenty more action coming up on the network for the rest of the week. So uh, don't be afraid to join us. Friday night, we have the uh, Geodesy GoPro GT series, which is uh, going to be absolutely fantastic. Lots of international interest in that series and uh, good racing always. Friday night, we have the AOSC round. Always good to see uh, those guys out on track. couple of drivers from the, this evening's racing will be attending there and uh, always good to see the V8 supercars out on track. Sunday as well, we have the Oceanic Endurance Championship, which is going to be another fantastic round. We've seen some excellent racing and lots of different winners in that series the last couple of rounds. And uh, if you like your endurance racing and uh, don't have much to do on a Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, definitely tune into that. And uh, next Monday for the iRacing V8 Supercars official series here on the iRacing Esport Network, we will be joining you for round seven from road america but once again it has been an absolute pleasure bringing you this evening's action my name is zach hanlon joining me in the booth and bringing us the beautiful pictures tonight was jay kennedy don't forget to leave us a subscribe on the iRacing esports network and jump over to sim speed tv as well and do the same over there and don't forget to bring biggest give us a big thumbs up on this video we do hope you enjoyed this evening's racing we know we did and until next time Big well. This is fantastic. 
This is GT Racing right now. He's got tracks and he can't win the outside of both of them! Maloney! Oh, he's taken Anderson! Anderson's up the wall! Oh my god! These guys are going to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What?